Hey there guys, thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And we work on a project from beginning to end uh, for however many days that takes. Uh, so we are wrapping up uh, this charming chevrons quilt. We are working on the binding. We're doing a self binding binding. So like the binding is made from the actual back of the quilt. We don't have to make a separate binding. Uh, and I'm, I'm wonder clipping that or pinning that tonight. And frankly, that'll probably take the whole evening tonight, uh, which means tomorrow we'll get to actually sew on it. And I'm super stoked about that. So we'll go over tonight again, how to do those mitered corners. Uh, or how I'm doing these mitered corners, and uh, we'll clip away at this tonight. So thanks for joining me, and uh, just to let you guys know again, I think next next week I'm going to be out. Uh, it's going to be it's my husband's and my anniversary, 15 year anniversary. So uh, we're going on a little vacation, so I won't be here next week. I will still do the splendid sampler two block for this week. Uh, but then next week we'll, we'll, um, I'll miss it. So uh, we'll have to do another makeup Saturday one of these days uh, again too. So uh, just keep that in mind, you guys. And uh, uh, like if it's a really hard block uh, the next week, don't worry, I will be back to do it eventually. <laughs> but all right, I'm going to flip you guys around and we will get going tonight. Thanks for joining me. All right, here is the quilt all laid out on, on the table here. We're going to get right down into it here, though. Here's all the wonder clips. This is where we started. Oh, happy anniversary, Noeline. Oh, you're 15th, too. Crazy. That's awesome. All right, so we started, and uh, uh, we started just on this corner here. So we're only this far in. We got this little corner, and then you know, about two feet's worth. So here's that um, mitered corner we did last night. And, uh, you know, as we clip, we will eventually reach another corner or three, and we'll uh, clip those when we get there. So I'm using just my wonder clips here. These are the mini wonder clips. I use them instead of pinning, uh, although, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna run out. I have this one, and then I have this uh, little bin of uh, the normal size, the, I guess, full size uh, traditional wonder clips. They actually make really big ones too. Uh, I don't have any of those. So this is all I have for wonder clips. I think we'll probably at least get, I don't know, at least halfway, I'm hoping, with with these wonder clips. Um, but man, I don't want to go any further apart. Like I could use less wonder clips. So I, I'm folding, I'm folding the edge of my binding. This is one inch. I've I've trimmed the uh, uh, batting to the edge of the front, and I left the back. So this is just part of the back. And then I cut it uh, so it's one inch away from uh, uh, my edge here. So I'm folding it so that the edges meet. And then I am folding it again, just over the edge. And that's what I'm going to eventually sew, machine sew down. So I could clip these clips further away, but then it, it bubbles up here. Like this part's open. So that's why I've been clipping them so close together, uh, which is going to make me run out of, run out of clips. Yep. I, oh, I'm sewing on the front. So I'm rolling the back of the quilt onto the front of the quilt. So then I'll be sewing just with a machine stitch, uh, sewing this down. I could hand do this, um, but I'm doing it with the machine. Oh, Gretchen, you finished yours. You're sleeping under your chevron quilt tonight. Yay, how exciting. Yeah, we've been working on this project for well, since January, actually, um, and I know that because we just did the label for it, and I had to, I had to look it up. So January, it's a January to August project, working um, every weekday for about an hour on it. <laughs> Except for we did, we did squeeze some other projects in there here and there. 
But you know, just a little bit every day and we have a whole nother thing done. And I have a whole new skill. Uh, this, this quilt was intended for, to help me learn how to free motion quilt. I haven't, I hadn't free motion quilted uh, before this, before this project really. And uh, this was my, this is my attempt to finally give it a go. I've been wanting to do it, to learn how to free motion quilt for years and just could never do it. Could never like pull the trigger to try and to give it a go. And uh, I, I finally thought I, you know, I need a whole, I need a project. Like I need a purpose for it. I don't like just practicing. I like making it into something. <laughs> so this whole quilt is, is me practicing. And I feel like I learned a ton and I, and I, Free motion quilted that little baby quilt on, uh, oh gosh, that was just yesterday. Um, so I got a free motion in the wild. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So this is a project with a, with a purpose. I'm just going around. So this is, you know, a little step that if you're doing a binding where you do a separate binding and stitch it on, sew it on, you don't have to do all this wonder clipping. You can just, you can just sew, but I don't know. I'd rather go around the edge and do this wonder clipping than all that pressing and making that binding. I'm not, I, I love making bindings that way. This is actually the first time I've done this type of binding, except for that baby quilt that I did yesterday. Um, it's just so quick. I can go around and then sew it down right away versus having to make the whole binding and then hand stitch it on. I suppose I could machine stitch on too but I don't know thought I'd give this a try I had plenty of fabric oh man I can't left hand do this I have I had plenty of fabric on the back left over so um thought might as well give this way a try if you don't have a good inch around around when you're done around your quilt on the back then then you probably don't have enough backing for it. Shimmying down the line. We're actually um, just a couple feet away from the corner and we'll do the corner again. I got all these little stray, stray ends. These are all, you know, strays from the quilting process. I could, um, I could sew those in or just trim them. I don't know. I'm going to deal with that after I get this guy sewn on. Ha! Penguin and fish free motion quilting extraordinaire. I don't know about that, but I do feel like way more confident in in it. Like I was just scared to even use the um the foot, the presser foot for it. But I'm I'm super stoked. I, I definitely want to do more more free motion quilting. I have uh, a Juki industrial sewing machine that I got on Craigslist a few years ago. Uh, one of those ones that, you know, you see, you see all the like fashion people use or factory sewers use, like those big industrial machines I have with a, like the whole table and it's got a motor underneath. And um, I have one of those, uh, someone sold it off of Craigslist. Uh, and they had it for the fashion program at the tech college here. And she, it just takes up too much space. So she didn't, she didn't want any more. So I got it from her and I, I haven't done much with it yet. Um, which I'm bummed about. I want to, I want to use it a whole lot more. Um, and I will, I, you know, all this stuff comes around again. I, I end up using, using all these things. But I just found, I, and, I, and I bought it. They have a uh, free motion quilting foot for it, this, this Juki. And it's super industrial looking too. But I got, so I got the darning foot or the free motion quilting foot for that industrial sewing machine. And I'm really excited to do free motion quilting on there because it's got the table built in. So like the sewing surface is flat on the table, this big table, and uh, it's got a huge throat. So I can stuff a whole quilt in there while I'm, while I'm sewing. 
and I think I can regulate uh, how fast it goes. So if I if I want to make sure I'm not going too fast, but I want it to have a maximum speed, it's all mechanical, so I have to like unscrew something or screw it tighter, and that will make it um, faster or slower. Not faster or slower, but it will. I can I can set a maximum for it. So if I don't want it to end up going super duper fast for free motion quilting, I could I can set it lower, I believe. There's, I, there's a ton to learn. I, I don't even really know how to thread it. I had to take photos um, of the first time I did it, and I have those photos <laughs> taped to it for how to thread it. But anyway, I have I have like a vision of being able to do some free motion quilting on on that thing, and that would be amazing. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Don't have an idea for any projects or anything yet, but I, I have an idea that it'd be awesome to give it a go <laughs> on, on that machine. So we'll see. I got the presser foot though, so I, I want to give it a go. Give it a try. Of course I have to buy the thing, buy the gadget before giving it a try, right? Yeah, I can sew, I think it can sew leather. Here's that part that we're going to have to figure out. I'm going to have to tuck these in or, I don't know, get these attached somehow. This is where we had to pick it out because I went over the edge with my quilting. Um, so it's not, it can sew leather, but it's not intended for leather. Like with industrial sewing machines, they each have a purpose and they have one purpose. They don't, they're not like home machines where they have all different sorts of stitches and you can sew all sorts of things on them. That's not how um, industrial sewing machines are. They're like meant for one thing. So the one that I have is just a straight stitch. It can't do zigzag, it can't do anything. It's just straight stitches. And uh, um, for leather, it can handle heftier fabrics and all that, and it probably could handle leather, but um, what you want for an industrial sewing machine, you know, so I've researched, uh, for leather, you want one with a walking foot. And it's a different, it's not the same as a walking foot for, um, you know, a home machine. It's, it's something, it's like built into it, built into the sewing machine. And it does the same thing. So it grabs the top and grabs the bottom at the same time. That's what a walking foot does. It grabs both uh, the top and bottom, not just the bottom. Uh, but it just functions a little bit different and, it, and it's like built into the machine. I think you can get like attachments, but they're not, it's not quite the same as getting a actual walking foot machine. And that's what they do leather on because it doesn't, it moves the leather easier and it doesn't, um, it slides easier and it doesn't damage the leather as much, I think. All right, we are at our corner here. So I have just, I've, um, I've curled it under. So the same thing, I've, I've brought my edge. Uh, so, it, so the edges match and then I've folded it one more time, just like normal. And I'm extending that this whole length. So I'm extending it uh, past, past the edge. I'm gonna attach that again. All right, and then I'm just rotating the whole piece just to get resituated. The nice thing about these wonder clips is that they're so strong, I can flop the quilt everywhere and I'm pretty confident that they won't move. So wonder clips are awesome for bindings. Okay, this quilt's big. It's gonna fall on the floor again. Hold on. Rotating it takes some effort. There we go. Okay, back to the corner. So I've extended that fold, that double fold, once to the edge and then one other time over. And this is, again, there's other ways to do this, but this is how, um, this is how I'm doing it. I think it's easy and, um, and I like it. It does put more bulk on one side versus the other, but I'm not gonna worry about all that. So, all right, I have my fold. Now I'm gonna do a 45 degree fold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my finger here. So I'm gonna continue the edge. Like if you just with your eyes continue this edge off to through here, I'm gonna put my finger right, right, um, you know, in line with the edge. 
that's going to be like my pivot point. And I'm going to fold this 45 degree angle up to the edge. So we got this nice triangle here. Okay, so I'm going to just hold that there with my fingers as best as I can. You could clip it if you wanted. But now I'm going to do, I'm going to just fold this edge to our other edge, just like how we've been doing. But I'm going to, I'm going to get this um, angle in there too. So folding to the edge and I'm folding, I'm folding the triangle too, folding that to the edge. Okay, and I'm just getting my fingers in there to hold it all down. So when you do that, that fold should make another point right here that's in line with um, the fold right here from our binding, from, from this side of the binding. So you can see, you know, if you extend this down, it's right at that point there. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where you want it to have a good, nice mitered edge. So now I'm going to take the whole thing and flip it over again, like how we've been doing over here. So we've done the fold to, to the edges, so the edges are together, and now our final fold over. I'm going to grab all this as I go. And when I fold it up, the corner should meet just perfectly um, with that other one there. And while I'm still holding it with my finger that it's perfect, I gotta get a clip in there. I'll show you guys again here in a sec. We'll do this again, just so you can, you can see. But there we go. So when I sew, I'm gonna just sew along this edge here. And when I get there, I'm just gonna rotate and keep sewing. But that's how um, I'm doing the, these super pretty mitered corners. So let's just get it from the side a little so you can see. So it'll, it'll be like that and that those edges will, will meet up perfectly. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll show you guys again. We'll even go back a little further. So this is our one inch piece. We're folding it to the edge and extending it all the way down, like past, past the edge, past the corner, that, that first fold. Then we're folding it again, just like how we've been doing. You know, the edge of the quilt is right here. We're butting, we're like pulling it so that it's against the, that edge of the quilt where, where it meets the uh, batting and the front of the quilt. All right, let's put a couple wonder clips in there. Another one down, down here. I'm leaving myself a little bit of a gap here um, just so I have room to fold, fold it over. Okay, so we've extended, we got that double kind of rolled fold here. Now I'm just going to put my finger here, like right where, if you're um, line, if you're following the edge of, or following visually the edge of the quilt to the, to the edge of the binding here, that's what's going to be my pivot point for the fold. And I'm going to fold up at a 45 degree angle so that it go, so that I'm, um, my fold is lining up with that edge. There we go. And I'm just gonna hold that there. It takes a little bit of coordination. Then we're gonna do our, our, our fold to the edge and then our fold over, you know, fold to the edge and our fold over like that. Um, just how we've been doing, but I'm gonna focus on this corner here. So we're gonna fold, fold to the edge. There we go. And that first fold is gonna make, ooh, let's adjust that a little bit. It's gonna make another little kind of 45 degree angle fold here. And we're, what we're shooting for is that this fold point is in line with our binding um, here. So if I extend this down, then that point should meet up. I don't want it like way, you know, I don't want it way over here because then our, our, our um, points won't match up very well. So I want to kind of focus on that area when I'm folding this edge over, nudge it over a little bit. I think this side's probably the problem. There we go. And now our second fold. You do have to grab on all of this stuff. But with that second fold, our corners should meet up. Um, so that edge, this point matches up with this point here. And this got a little loose because I've been kind of putzing with it, so I'm going to actually do it again. Must be late, I'm getting. My uh, perfectionist zone is 
starting to happen. Once I get once it gets too late, I'm, I have a harder time staving off the need for everything to be perfect. But there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, let's do that 45 degree fold. And our first fold going up. And our second fold. There we go. That's looking better. And I'm going to get a clip right in there to hold that in place until, until we're sewing. All right, and then I can just continue along this edge with our next fold. It clips out here. Oh, thanks, Debbie. Yeah, I, I think it's it. Uh, it looks nice, and it's it's pretty easy. Oop. Well, it's upside down. It doesn't really matter. But again, perfection's on. I gotta flip it around. <laughs> Some days are like that, I suppose. So I am, you know, this is a half inch binding. It's not a quarter inch binding. So I am kind of covering up this point. I should have maybe trimmed this so it was a half inch away because it would have been nicer if this folded up right on that point of the chevron. But oh well, we're going to clip some points. Something to think about for next time. Always got to learn something, right? But next time I do some sort of quilt with points on the edge, I bet you'll... Make sure I have enough edge on there for the binding. Oh, Gretchen, you want to see the uh, that new like Jaws movie, Meg? <laughs> I just saw a preview for that uh, when we went to Mission Impossible. I don't know. Looks like uh, they're trying to do a not a remake, but a big continuation of Jaws and all that. I don't know. I would watch Jaws again, though. That that was um scary. And done. Just shot really well. It's been a while since I've seen that. And quotable. But yeah, I don't know if I need to see a giant, giant shark. <laughs> In some action-y movie that's, I don't know, except for Mission Impossible, all action-y movies lately have just been so meh. Or like big epic whatevers. But yeah, except for Mission Impossible, that was satisfying. That one was good. I would watch that one again. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm going to be watching the Meg. <laughs> or Meg. Wait, the Meg? Or Meg. What is this? Stand? It's like Megalodon or something. No thanks. I don't need to think about swimming and having things underneath me. <laughs> swimming. <laughs> All right. So we're, um, this is, I don't know, man, we're going to be real close. I, I don't think we're quite going to make it with the Wonder Clips all the way around, but I, but I'm on, uh, um, you know, if we get all the way, I don't think we will. I think I'll, I'm, I think I'll probably have like five feet left over or so of quilt, uh, I have this many left of um, these mini wonder clips, and I don't think I'm gonna make it all the way to the end of of this side. But assuming there's about the same number of wonder clips in this bin as I have in that other, we're gonna get pretty far around here. I don't think we'll get all the way yet, and I'm debating whether I should just pin the rest like I could just put a couple pins in here which now that I have wonder clips it's so annoying to use pins <laughs> uh, they nudge the fabric just more than I want 
uh, where these clips don't, they just, you just clip them on and your fabric stays. Whereas when you put a pin in, you're kind of pushing the fabric as you push the pin in. And, you know, I don't want to stab myself 800 times. Oh, speaking of, I should have told John this. <laughs> I'll have to tell him when he comes in here again. Yesterday, when I was taking all the, like, uh, the uh, basting pins out of here, um, I dropped one on the floor and I could hear it drop and I looked all over for it and I cannot find it at all. So somewhere on this floor is an open, an open, uh, um, safety clip, <laughs> safety pin clip. <laughs> and uh, I got down at all different angles because usually I'm really good at finding like pins and needles that I accidentally drop because I can move around and then the light will hit it differently and I'll see it. But I, for the life of me, cannot find this safety pin. And you know, those aren't small and skinny. I mean, I don't know. So that frightens me a little. <laughs> oh, so Paul, yeah. So after, after I stitched the first little bit of this, I can, I can use the clips later. Um, yeah, like once I sew, I'll be taking all these clips off and then I'll have all, like oodles of clips to clip the rest. Except the one thing, so that's what I'm debating, using pins or doing that. Um, just sewing what I have and then taking the wonder clips that I take off to clip the rest. But the one thing I, you know, I'm looking, trying to look ahead a little bit. The one thing that I'm not excited about for that is I don't want to take the quilt off of my sewing machine once I start sewing this binding on. And I think it just might be super awkward and annoying to fiddle around with um, this on the machine. <laughs> yeah, with the law of ad averages, John will probably be the one to step on it. I mean, I, I seriously, I mean, we, this isn't a carpet or anything. I, it's a, the tiniest of little dining rooms. It should just be very visible and I, it's freaking me out. I move the chair, I move things everywhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's bothering me that it's there. I, I know it's down there. I heard it hit the ground and I didn't recover it. So I know, I know it exists. Uh, it's annoying. Yeah, we got two more clips in here. Try a flashlight. Yeah, maybe I'll do that when, when we're done here. Just kind of flash that around. That's how I usually find them is I just kind of change my angle and then the, the light hits it a little different and I can see see the metal. And I do stupid things like I... I think you guys have probably seen it before. I Sometimes I make harnesses for the pins if... Like, um, if I'm stuffing a stuffed animal or something and you can, and you have to move, um, move the fleece around or the batting, the stuffing around in it, uh, in the stuffed animal, I, I, uh, I tie a pin to a piece of yarn because sometimes when you move it, I move it with a pin. So I'll stick the pin in and move the stuffing around a little bit. Like if I need to get it to just the right spot, but sometimes I'll fling the pin doing that. And I've, I've made a uh, lasso for that basically to go around my hand. So I'm like, Ooh, I gotta get a new, the new clips open first. Um, I'm, I freak out with like pins and stuff being places, you know, I, I don't put them in my, my um, chair or anything like that. I'm, I'm always very aware where they are and bothering me that this one exists somewhere when it should be so easy to find. Oh, you, if you drop a pin, your husband, Linda, your husband is always the one who steps on it. I know that's what I'm worried about, especially since this is kind of like a high traffic area of our house. So just, um, you know, you have to walk through this little bit by the table here to get to the kitchen and it's going to work its way into where people walk. The main con, Marianne is saying the main con with this binding is the wear and tear. 
Uh, yeah, the edges get get the most handling. Let's see. I have the, if it rips or gets holes, repair goes into the quilt. Oh, that's true. Regular binding. Yeah, regular binding. That's true. If the binding gets totally worn, you can just take it off, in theory, and put a new binding on. So, yeah. I mean, if this was, you know, going into a contest or something... Um, well, no, that's true. I mean, I, I do plan on using this quilt a lot, but this whole quilt was kind of like a little practice quilt, so I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to, that's a really good point. You definitely want to think about the use of your quilt and, and all that. You might want a, a heftier, heftier binding on it. And this, we're only getting one layer of fat, or like, you know, the two layers, the two full layers of fabric too. And there's just like one layer of fabric protecting the batting. Um, when we do our other type of binding, we got like four layers of fabric on there protecting the binding. Ooh, I almost flung this guy. All right, we are getting to this next corner here. Yeah, and who is using it too, and how they're using it. Yeah, for sure. Especially if, you know, if you have a dog and they're tearing into it or something. <laughs> a heftier binding might be a good idea. Okay. Um, I extended that. Fold, double fold over that edge again, and now we gotta rotate this bugger again. Oh, you have poodles and you freak out if you drop a needle. Yes! Your poppy brought you the back of an earring once that you lost. Oh my gosh. Yes, those animals will probably just find everything. Luckily, luckily there's no pets here, but yeah, that, that'd be scary. You don't want them eating a needle or something. A pin. All right, let's do this fold again. I'm going to fold it right on this 40 to 5 degree angle here. There we go. I'm going to hold that and we'll fold our edges up. There we go, and fold it one more time. And there's our good looking miter. Get a clip on there. And I'm trying to do these left-handed clips and I'm not that coordinated. All right, there we are. All right, this is side number three. So this is another long, long edge side. Let's see if I can do these clips a little farther apart, but I don't want them to be too far apart. Uh, and then we have that one more edge. So I'm hoping, hoping to at least get this edge done with these wonder clips. And I don't know, I think I might resort to the pins. I know I can just sew and then use the clips um, that I take off as I sew, but like I said, I just, kind of want it all done and I don't want to clip while it's still in the, on the sewing machine and I don't know. We'll see how far we, see how much we have left. I also don't want to stab myself a million times with, with the pins. Yeah, I mean, with with um, this type of binding, you know, your back is exposed here too, so there's going to be a lot more rubbing on on this little quilting here too. But you know, different ways to do binding. If you need to get a binding done 
super quick for a blankie or something, or you just don't want to, you just want to try something new. This is a different way to do it. Oh, you usually use this method for wall hangings or small quilts. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, something with heavy use. Yeah, you might want to consider that other binding. It's called like the, I'm not quite sure what it's called, like the French, it's kind of like a French seam. It, it's, it, it's related to that, a French blah blah something binding. Um, but it's, it's what you see often. Something, oh, the edge of the quilt just fell on the table or fell on the floor. Uh, it's where we, you make that, uh, that, that um, bias tape, basically. And then you sew it on and then fold, oop, geez, and then fold it over the edge. Yeah, I, I like that too, Gretchen. Gretchen says that I love that this is, that it's just not wasted fabric. Yeah, I, I, that's, I like the cleverness of this. And, you know, you know I like my little clever tricks that I learned. They're like little magic tricks. This is another little magic trick. Hey, you can just fold over the back of the quilt if you got it. And, um, been doing it. Oh, Linda, you've been practicing your free motion a little every day after watching. Oh, that's awesome. Are you tr like, are you trying new things and do you see any improvement? Um, I think doing it every day really helped me a lot. I could definitely tell, you know, we'd, we'd have the weekend and I'd have the days that I'd work on the Splendid Sampler 2 uh, blocks. So I could definitely tell when I wasn't doing it every day, when I had that little little break. Man, it's definitely a good everyday practice type thing. To keep, uh, keep the skills up. To come up with more projects to do it. I have that, um, that the I Love Home quilt, I still want to do free motion, like fancy free motion quilting on it. But I gotta, I gotta get the back of that done. So, in one of our next Finish It Fridays, I gotta, gotta work on the back of my I Love Home quilt. That's, that, that's a stray quilt. I can't have stray quilts anymore. Oh, you cut all your quilt bindings three inches wide. Oh, to fold them twice to make them sturdier. Ooh, Connie, that's that's a good suggestion. Connie folds hers twice over. You know, the the binding, I mean, that's the whole idea, right? The the binding is what's protecting this raw edge, right? So, um if you're having a quilt that's going to get this edge rubbed all the time, you know, in theory, the stronger and thicker, the better. Oh, Linda, it's work here. It's starting to look better. Your free motion quilting. Oh yeah. How, how you're feeling about doing that at that day, like how well it goes and stuff. I, I totally agree. Yeah. It, it's funny. I definitely could tell too that at the, 45 minute mark is when the skills start going downhill again. I And you know that I needed a little bit of warm up. So I needed like a, you know, a couple swirl warm up, like a three minute warm up to like get, get it feeling right again. Uh, and then get my brain thinking that way again. And then I could only do it for 45 minutes, like that 45 minute mark every evening when we were working on it. That's when it just got loosey goosey again. Ugh, Sue, your husband is finding all the pins in his foot. Yeah, I know that's what I'm that's what I'm scared about. <laughs> you know, I just vacuumed in here too, so there's there's like nothing on the floor except for this invisible pin somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna have to give it another look tonight. All right, shimmy in down. Yeah, we're, we're getting close to that edge. I think we'll make it around. We'll make it around this last corner. This is our last corner, this one coming up. And then I just have that straight edge. Ooh, you know what I forgot? I forgot, um, I'm gonna have to get that out tomorrow so I don't forget. 
uh, my little penguin and fish label. I was gonna grab one of those so I could clip it into into this quilt. I'll have to make sure to grab it so I don't forget to sew it in. Marianne, you have to keep all your pin cushions in the drawer or your cat pulls them out. Oh, see, naughty kitty. Yep, gotta keep those guys locked up. Um, your pins. <laughs> That's what I always, like, I'm always nervous about the idea. Like, I'd love to have a little kitty cat, but just where would I put my stuff? <laughs> like, there's so much crafting knickknacks and stuff everywhere and fabric and I don't know. I don't know how I deal with a cat. You found a pin in your garage stuff today. It's just... <laughs> You know, that's that's one reason that I love my um, magnetic pin holder. Oh, that was, that's like one of my best secret tools, I would say. Um, make life easier tools is that magnetic, I don't use pins as much anymore, but that magnetic pin cushion. Because then you, if you have pins laying everywhere, you can just drag that magnet over that whole area and, and suck them up. Maybe I just need to drag that around, but I'm, I'm just surprised I can't see it. Ah, <laughs> so he's, husband's good about letting you know that he found, found your pins, I bet. <laughs> All right, I don't want to run out of these wonder clips before I get to, get to that corner though. I want to make sure that I, Use a wonder clip on the corner. I think I'll have just enough, actually. Ooh, I, it looks like I cut this binding a little skinnier here. <laughs> it's getting a little thin. Ugh, you've caught your cat pulling the pins out of the pin cushion. Scary. I guess thread is really bad for cats too. Like if they swallow thread, it can get, they, they sometimes have to get surgery to get, get the thread. Cause it, I don't know, wraps around their insides weird or something. Oh, fishing hook magnet tins are great for a pin to know. That's interesting. Never thought about that before. You know, it's funny though, fishing gear. I have always used various fishing gears for craft supplies, like a tackle, tackle boxes and stuff um, are perfect little containers or for uh, beading, beading or, you know, threads, all sorts of projects. So when we um, went to Fleet Farm when I was little, I'd always go into the fishing area to see what fun containers could hold supplies. It was like before actual container stores and stuff. All right, we have two more clips, which is just gonna be enough. Actually, I'm gonna scooch one down. Let's try and shimmy this space here. We'll shimmy this one over too. Ugh, that's a bigger space than I want. I might have to putz around with that, but I wanna get like, I only have two left, so I want those two for the miter and then the one next to the miter. All right, rotate time. So we do have eh, about five feet or so that I don't have enough wonder clips for. I think I am gonna, I think I am going to pin it instead of um, waiting for the clips. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pin it tonight yet. Then I'll at least know that the whole binding is ready to be sewn. one feels funny I think oh there's a lot of oh that's why I got like a weird little I got like a weird little corner of fabric in there I'm like why is there it's like extra too much stuff in there there we go out of there felt funny Pin it in so first, do you think, Sharon? I know, never enough wonder clips, right, Karen? <laughs> they sell them on Mass Drop every once in a while. Maybe next time. 
Next time they pop up, maybe I'll have to get another batch. Ugh, gosh. You know, it's funny. I think, um, I, all those, like those pins that, the one that's on the floor, <laughs> except for the one that's on the floor somewhere, I think this is the first time in ages that I think every of those safety pin pins that I own, every one of them is in my little jar container. Like they're out of the quilts. <laughs> Uh, so I don't have any, uh, any basted quilts right now, basically. For the first time in a long time. All right. Out of, out of those. So I'm going to just reach up here. Down to the pins. So here's my, oh gosh, my magnetic, um, my magnetic pin cushion. But yeah, here's why it's awesome. If you have like pins everywhere like this, you can just go near and it, it picks them all up right away. Except for, I have a ton on here, so. Um, oh, and then what's nice is that when I'm sewing, I can just kind of throw it at it. <laughs> throw it near the magnet, and it'll it'll uh, catch it. I um, I dropped it on the ground. This is a, what is it called? A grab it. Oh, gosh, 1980. I didn't have it. That's when the patent was. Um, but I've had this one for ages, and I dropped it on the floor, and it, and it split in half. So I just have, I have some... Uh, packaging tape there so it's it's not pretty and I just kind of have a ton of random pins in here I should I should just throw away the pins that I know I don't like and start fresh I think all right um I think I'm gonna go sideways like this yeah I think I'm gonna go like that except for That'll be harder to pull out when I'm sewing. Maybe, maybe I should go this way. I didn't want to go this way because it's just this little space that I got to get into, but um, it'll be easier to pull off of the machine. Oh, Connie, you have a grab it too and love it. Amazon has cute little containers. Oh, a fake Wonder Clips. Yeah, there, um, there's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different Wonder Clips and stuff out there. No, and yes, they, they are, um, I think you can get some cheaper ones now too, which is nice. This is our first row here. So this is the top of the quilt. Ugh, it's finicky. I'm going to stab myself a million times. All right, we're going to start when we sew. We're going to start at the top here because um, then I can get rid of these pins as fast as possible. Usually I like starting to do bindings on the lower um, lower right hand corner. Uh, in art world that is at least in the US where we read from right to left and up top to bottom. Uh, the bottom right hand corner of like an art piece or something is like the least looked at piece or area. So I kind of like, because our, our eye just kind of naturally goes to that quadrant last because of how we're used to reading. And um, unless, you know, there's something to draw your eye down there. But that's why I always kind of like to start my binding in the bottom, that bottom right hand area. Because uh, if I have some overlapping stitches or, or something, then in theory, they're going to be easier, or it's going to be um, something that people don't immediately look at in that position. But in this case, I'm going to start at the top because I don't want to deal with these pins. Man, I keep thinking that I'm stepping on that safety pin on the floor, but I just keep, um, I keep stepping on the cord here. Oh, we should make a, that's a cute idea, Nolene. Um, making a magnetic, a magnetic cushion. We could totally do that. Cause yeah, you're right. There's those super strong magnets that exist. Just get one of those and put some cute fabric or something around it. Or kind of like a, um, like, like a patch, make a fabric patch. And then put some magnets at the bottom of it, and that'd be pretty cute. All 
All right, I think I can do this. I have the pins to my right. We're almost almost done with this. I do have some wonder clips at the top edge here. So we don't have to use a ton of pins, but I'm happy I'm doing it this way because then, then it's just done and I don't have to fiddle with it later, even though I don't like using the pins. I've only stabbed myself a couple self a couple times so far. So much quilt. If the um, binding starts to become, starts to like unravel on you, then like in the middle, like if it starts popping up, uh, then you probably want to pin a little closer. Yeah, there's too many pins on, on this pin cushion. They don't all want to stay. Pins are one of those things that you just kind of acquire. <laughs> Over time, I think. More and more random sets of pins. These ones with the little, I like these ones, the, they have little, little glass um, tops, heads, little glass heads, so you can um, iron with them and stuff and they won't, they won't melt or anything. It, but uh, in particular, I like those ones because uh, mine that I have are a little thinner, so they're easier to stick in um, quilting weight fabric and they leave smaller holes versus, you know, some of these other ones have are a lot fatter, um, the, the needle part. I don't know where those ones came from. I think I was just cleaning up some of my craft stuff and uh, found those pins and threw them on here. I don't like them though. I might just throw them out. Almost there. I think maybe two or three more. And we will be ready to sew. And we'll do that tomorrow. So we should be able to sew this whole. Th oh, this is an itty bitty one. We should be able to sew this whole thing tomorrow, I'm, I'm assuming. Then after that, we just have to clean it up go around and um, trim it and give it a wash. We'll be done. You really like the loop to loop quilting? Sue, so, so do I. So this was the first row that I did um, for free motion quilting. And it's just these really big loops. That's it. And I just think it's really fun. It's the whole, the whole thing isn't loops, this top one, but it's all just big going from one side of the shell chevron to the other. Like here, I just have some curvy zigzags. But yeah, shoo, 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 just real quick. I would, you know, I, I think it's nice just that. I would I would do that again. No need to get super fancy. That's cute. All right, here's our last one. And then we're back to our beginning here. Yep, Marianne, I think you are absolutely right. I will definitely start sewing this pin side first. Um, yeah, so I'll probably start, I'll probably start about right here, um, leave this corner, uh, unless I start like maybe this edge and I'll, and I'll hit that corner and then that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably start right here. Um, cause I don't think, you know, you're going to look at this top more than you'll look at this little side here. So I'll probably start right here, get that first corner and then go along this, this pin side. And it's... And it's actually right here. I don't have to, I can just bring my sewing machine over here and I don't have to shimmy the quilt everywhere. So I think that's even a better reason. So we'll start right here <laughs> to make my life easy and uh, go here and then we'll rotate and do this pinned side get rid of those as fast as I can. And we'll go around this thing. The one thing I, I do want to remember is I got to get that little label in, um, not this side, but the next side towards the bottom. I want to, I want to throw that in there. Oh, it could go on this side, whatever side it ends up being upright. <laughs> That's how I have to do it. Actually, I think it needs to go on this last edge. Um, so I'll have to just pin that just so I don't forget about that. But that's, that's the only other thing. 
Okay, guys, we're ready to go for tomorrow. All I have to do is set up uh, my sewing machine and the extension table again. I think, I think I'm gonna just use this crazy green, even though it's gonna look so wacky on, on uh, um, this red. I mean, it'll be very visible. And it's that 30 weight still, so it's even thicker. But, you know, it's kind of silly. It'll be one last little frame on this thing. Um, I, I don't have any red left, so <laughs> kind of have to do it that way. Uh, and, and I have a, one more bobbin of it. I'm thinking this bobbin will make it all the way around the quilt. And I have um, the top will be the same color. So I think that will be the plan for uh, the color of it. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and uh, uh, we'll call it an evening. Yep, Marianne, we are just about done. All righty. So I am super stoked to be this far on this guy. Um, yeah, like I said earlier, we've been working on this since January. So it's like a big uh, to get uh, a project that's that long. At least it's big for me. I am not... Until I've started doing this um, this live Facebook every single night, uh, I, I'm not a huge big project person. I like the quick wins. That's why I like embroidery and stuff. I can just do a little embroidery and be done in a couple hours and it's like, whew, I finished something. That feels great. Uh, with these big things like quilts, every step just takes forever. So it's, it's not, um, I, I've had to learn uh, to like the consistency idea, like, ooh, consistent little things get things done. So I've had to like learn to like that. And, and this every night thing here has helped uh, to me a ton to get these bigger type projects done. Sometimes I have to stop the projects in the middle to do a little embroidery or a little quick win project, uh, like as a breather and then get back on it. But um, yeah, so it's just exciting to me to finish a project almost that um, was started in January, <laughs> a good uh, eight month project. So, all right, guys, I'll get this up on YouTube as usual at the Penguin and Fish movies on YouTube. And uh, tomorrow we'll sew this guy on. And then it's just cleaning it up uh, after that and uh, giving it a good wash. Ooh, I'm excited to see how it crinkles up. That'll be fun. So, all right, I will see you guys tomorrow. And then Thursday is our new Splendid Sampler 2 block. So, see you then for that too. Good night.